Hi, in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how you install CrashPlan on Exponology or Synology. CrashPlan is an automatic backup software which makes it easy to backup all your personal files to the cloud. If you are not familiar with CrashPlan and their service, you can head over to store.code42.com slash store and check out, their, check out their overview of plans. The most important feature I think is the 448-bit uh, file encryption, continuous minute by minute backups, and of course the unlimited storage. The price isn't that bad, I think, with $60 a year. So personally, I've been using the individual plan for about a year now, and I'm really happy with it. It's, it has saved my life multiple times. So if you're interested, just keep on watching. CrashPlan does not officially support Synology DSM. However, it has a Linux client, so it's pretty easy to install through a third-party repository. First off, head over to the Package Center, click on Settings, and make sure that the trust level is set to any publisher. Go to Package Source, click Add, enter PC Load Letter, for example, the name doesn't mean anything. And add the location packages.loadletter.co.uk. Click OK. Since CrashPlan is a, a Java application, we need to install Java first. So uh, head over to all. And look for the Java Manager application. Click install. Once it's running, we can go to our start menu, click the Java manager, and you will see that the installation status is not installed. So we have to install Java. And fortunately, it's quite easy. It's four steps. Go to the Java homepage. And we want the, let's see, JDK for i586. For Linux, this one. We save it. Browse. see downloads there it is okay and this will just take a couple of minutes now java is installed so you can click ok you will see which uh, version is installed and you can also upgrade java from here if you want to close the window and now we can install the crash plan uh, server head over to the community uh, and in this case I will choose a crash plan uh, client if you have the pro version you can use this package hit the um, install button read the license agreement I will just accept click next and uh, apply Now the status is running, normally it's uh, recommended to actually stop it and restart it once before uh, installing and uh, connecting from the client. So just stop it and start it again and now we are ready for the next section. Now that we have installed CrashPlan on our server, it's time to install the client on our workstation. So open your favorite browser and go to code42.com slash crash plan click the get started button 
and then download. Depending on your operating system, click on Windows 64 bit or Mac. Say save the file. And continue the installation as you normally would. Now that crash plan is installed, it'll want to, it'll want to, now that crash plan is installed, or it will automat. Now that crash plan is now that crash plan is installed, it will automatically start and ask us to create a new crash plan account. The first thing we should do is to close this down because we don't want to run this locally, but rather use this as a client to connect to our server. So close it down, and I would also suggest to exit the application the tray area. Now we will have to modify two files before we will be able to connect. Go to this PC, local disk, program files, crash plan, and then the conf directory. Here you will find a file called UI properties. If you are on a Mac or a Linux, the, the, the path to this file will differ. So take a look here for the correct path on your operating system. Next up is that you have to modify this file and add the server IP address. Because this is in the program files directory, we won't have write access to, to this file uh, directly. So the easiest way of doing of, of editing this file is just drag it on your desktop and edit it with your favorite text editor. The only thing you have to do is to uncomment this line, service host and update it with your server's IP address, like so. Save the file, close it, and move it back to the conf directory. The second file you will need to edit is uh, stored on the local disk in a hidden folder called uh, program data, crash plan, and dot UI info. The easiest way of updating this file with the correct information is to use WinSCP. Open WinSCP and enter your service IP address. In order to get this part to work, your server has to have SSH enabled. So log in. Navigate to uh, var lib crash plan, and here you will see the dot ui underscore info file. If you can't see this file, then you have to uh, enable hidden files just by going on to options, preferences, panels, and select show hidden files. Drag it on your desktop. And now we have to edit this file as well. At the end of the string, you should have four uh, zeros, which will indicate the IP address of your server. So update it with your service IP. There you go. Save the file, close it, and then replace it in the program data crash plan directory. Replace. And that should be it. If you now start the crash plan client, it should automatically connect to your server and you should be able to create either a new account or log in with an existing account. Sadly, there's no visual feedback if I'm actually on the server or if I'm working locally. But once you're signed in, 
you will notice that you have access to the files on the server. It's worth mentioning that if you only intend to use the crash plan client as a remote connection tool, you may want to disable the crash plan service running on your workstation. In order to do that, you go to the start menu, search for uh, local services, find crash plan backup service and stop and set this to disabled and stop the service. With the service disabled, you won't be able to back up files from your workstation, but uh, I don't need this in my uh, setup. So if I now go down here and select the files I want to sync, I will note you will notice that I'm working on my server since I have the volume one and uh, at App Store directory. So from here, it's basically a just standard crash plan configuration. Head over to settings and uh, go through all the tabs and change them as necessary. Uh, if you have um, applied for a crash plan uh, a plan, you will also need to uh, log in with that account. Configure your uh, security and choose which file you want to sync. I'm not going to cover this in this tutorial. Uh, there's very good documentation on Crash Plans website. So, but if you have any questions, just leave me a comment and I will try to help you as best as I can. Even though the default setting for the Crash Plan package should work right out of the box, if you intend to sync a whole lot of files, like a few terabytes uh, of data, then you should probably want to make some changes to the configuration. Especially if you're on Xpenology, you have uh, and you're able to, to add more memory to your virtual machine, you may want to increase the memory that CrashPlan has access to. In my case, I'm syncing quite a lot of data. I think it's about three terabyte and the rule of thumb from CrashPlan is that you should assign one gig of memory for every terabyte you intend to sync. So the way you do this is to, uh, to stop the package and make sure it has stopped completely. There you go. Use the WinSCP to log in to the server as previously shown and then navigate to volume one at App Store, Crash Plan, and find the file named synopackages.vars. If you right click and edit this file, you will see that you have a variable here called user max heap, which is set to one, uh, one gig uh, as default. If you're on a Synology NAS, you don't ha really have that much flexibility because you are normally, um, you only have a certain amount of memory which you can assign. But if you're on Xpenology, I recommend to remove the pound sign and multiply this to uh, with the number of terabytes you intend to sync. So in my case, I think I use 3000 here. Hit save, close the file and restart crash plan. This will allow crash plan to use more memory and the change will also survive upgrades made to the package. So if another, if a new version is released, your changes won't be overwritten, which is quite nice. Because the crash plan package isn't officially supported by Code42 software, it may sometimes crash when new versions are released. Patters, who is a maintainer of this repository, is doing an amazing job of keeping the package up to date. And normally it just takes a few days after a, an update has been released to, um, to, to be available on the repository. So if a new version is released, it may break crash plan, which uh, sets the status to stopped. 
The way to determine if there's an issue is normally to take a look at the log. Here you would see whatever's going on. The most important is to um, take a look at the version number. On the server I'm running 4.5.0 and compare that to the client you're using. In my case it's 4.5.0 as well, but if the client would be newer or older as uh, compared to my server, then this the connection wouldn't work. So it's very important to keep this these two applications in sync. So if you upgrade the server, you have to upgrade the client and vice versa. And also if you have any problems getting the application to run uh, or the package to run, uh, take a look at the log file or uh, leave a comment below. Take also a look at my guide here on how to repair or do a manual upgrade. I would love to do this in this video, but uh, since I don't have a broken installation currently, it's quite hard to uh, make a good video on it.